Omnis Duo still sucks, but I fucked up. So, I put out a video last week on the Omnius Duo controller, and in that video, I made some mistakes. And I would like to acknowledge them in this video and also offer an apology to a lot of my uh, close friends on the YouTube spheres. So, in my Omnius Duo review, I basically flamed the controller, ran it. That's all good. But um, I basically did a one take review on the video. I literally click record, one take, shot it, quickly posted it, and I didn't really think about what I was saying in that video and how that opinion that I expressed can be uh, comprehended in a way. So I want to basically publicly apologize. Well, let me just talk about what I said. Basically, I called out, um, this is what basically happened. I called out all of the YouTube channels that posted the Omnius Duo controller, uh, saying that they were under contract and the opinion that was expressed is basically that these guys are potentially lying to you and they're not authentic and that they're under contract with these companies. And actually a buddy of mine pointed out that I pretty much was saying that they're getting paid to do so, or at least that's the opinion you can draw from what I said. I would, I'm a thousand percent retracting that statement. I've already deleted the reel. I am trimming out the section where I even said anything about it in my video. I want to publicly apologize to all the channels, Mojax, Digital DJ Tips, Crossfade, Cleveland Terry, Nick Spinelli, of course. All these guys are friends, homies, colleagues in the industry, and they are doing a lot of work to be able to put out those videos and all of them are of the highest quality when it comes to actually going through and professionally creating a professional polished review and overshot of these controllers and of these products. Unlike me, who just randomly jumped on here and made a rant based on the opinions I was seeing thrown around online and the videos that I watched, I wanted to just capture that and post it into a video and I went a little too far based on past experience that I've had with some companies and said some things that shouldn't have been said. So all you guys, I am a thousand percent more than sorry. I retracted the statements. Uh, my video didn't even get much traction. I was trying to pump it out, you know, the day before the release or the day after the release to get some reactions to it, get some views. Of course, there's some elements in my video that were meant to try and, you know, get more views, clevy titles, stuff like that. And I am sorry for the statements I made. Thank you, Cleveland, for commenting on the video. Thank you for basically calling me out on it. Uh, Nick really hit home with his live stream video yesterday. I watched it and literally I couldn't sleep last night thinking about how that message got misconstrued or not even how that message came across. That was the message that was said. And he basically said that I challenged his, well actually let's just cut to it. This is what Nick said. In the beginning and the end of the video, he said this. I'm not gonna call out the channels like that, but everyone that drops that video the first day that already has the piece of hardware, all of these guys are under contracts with these companies and they're not gonna say too much of their own opinions on these things. I'm gonna be honest, they're not. They're not gonna rant it, they're not gonna talk shit because they wanna keep that relationship with them. Having an opinion and flaming something is fine. Do it all you want. I've done it a bajillion times, but like to, to come out and just be like, listen, man, like these guys, these fucking guys, any guy that got the Pioneer controller, you know what I mean? Like, think, listen to me, listen to me. These guys, these guys that got the oh so wonderful contracts with Pioneer. These guys, you got to watch out for these guys. They're just going to, they're just going to say everything's great. And you got to take it with a grain of salt. And you got to wait and come to my YouTube channel and listen to me. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go online and I'm going to look at pictures and I'm going to tell you the real, the, what everyone's thinking, you know? I mean, I'm all about being a shock jock. I built this channel on being a shock jock. It's just, just you, you don't got to talk about other people's characters. And like, I just had to address that. And like, you know, and put me to side, like Mojax, Cleveland Terry, the Crossfader guys, like Phil and Digital DJ Tips. These are good people. These are good people. Solid, like really good DJs, really good reviewers. They're, 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 they're like... They're at the top of the game of what they do. Like, and, and you can't, you know, it's just, it's just not right. And, and it's a shame for Rick too. Cause I feel like he really is like, 
like, you know, burning bridges and shit. Like, it's just like, you know what I mean? I mean, not with me, but like, I'm talking like just in general, like there, you, I'm sure that, you know, after watching back what I said, after hearing comments from Nick, he's a thousand percent correct. That is literally how I came off in that video. And I, I am truly sorry for posting that. Like that was out of line, out of conduct. I didn't mean to do it. Um, let me just tell you that, let me just clear the air real quick. Let me just clarify what it is. Nick did a good job clarifying there, but let me just clarify to you guys some of the elements, because there's even more elements that Nick didn't even mention when it comes to these guys that have contracts, not contracts, NDAs. So they are under an NDA obligation that basically says that they cannot post any content pictures whatsoever of said product, whether it's a controller, speaker, whatever, until a said release date, like Nick said. Let me also go further. They are under no obligation to say a positive or negative review. They can say what they want. Also, they're not getting paid. These guys are not getting paid to make the video. They don't even get to keep the controller. The company offers for them to buy it at probably about market rate, maybe a little bit of a discount. I don't know the specifics on that, but they're not getting paid. They don't get to keep the controller. These guys are literally making the review on their own dime so that they can put the content out and educate you guys and basically show you guys what the product is. That was the overarching thing I was trying to provide a little transparency as to why you guys see like 10 fully polished review videos being posted on the same day about the same product. And for me to challenge those guys' characters, they're entitled to their own opinion. And for me to basically say that they are lying to you guys as the viewers could be far from the truth. The only thing I was trying to say is that these guys are given the product and they're basically entitled to make their own video on it and then they all get posted on the same day. For you, And then you guys just basically need to take that information as to reading through all the reviews and judge your own opinion. What I was trying to do in my video was capture the mass opinion that I was seeing on the comments on Pioneer Alpha Theta's Instagram, on their Facebook page, what I was seeing comments on the other review videos, the the mass feedback overarching about this controller was that it was missing a lot of key features and it was above market price that people wanted to pay for it. Um, really thinking about it, it's more like the Lamborghini of the all-in-one controllers at this point, the, the small all-in-one controllers. Like, it's the Lamborghini. And in every market, there's a Lamborghini and there's a Toyota Camry. This one just happens to be the Lamborghini. So the price point just says itself. I mean, some people point out about, you know, it's missing key, it's, it's missing streaming service support, which they could add down the line. Um, but, you know, the combination of releasing a controller under a new brand and the combination of it missing a lot of key features with a really high price tag in the eyes of most consumers, the Lamborghini price tag does not lend itself to be mass liked which is the opinion I was trying to capture in my video. And like Nick said, everyone's opinion is different on this controller. Everyone has their own different mindset and whatnot. And I was giving my opinion based on my experience as being a mobile DJ that runs a multi-op that kind of cares about how much their controllers cost because we have to outfit our DJs or our DJs have to invest in the same gear. I wanna share some of my past experience with companies to just provide uh, a little background on why I said some of the things I did. Not that it was truthful. I went a little too far down my rant rabbit hole and let me just explain to you guys some of my past experiences. So, like I've worked with many companies. I've been offered stuff from many companies. So I just want to tell you some of the back-end marketing stuff that happens. I'll even tell you some of the stuff I do for Both Lighting. Um, Both Lighting USA, the company that I own when it comes to affiliates, like people, influencers, and the marketing side of things. Because some of the practices I can say are a little frowned upon, um, not in the case of Alpha Pioneer, but it's just, making it more transparent for the industry. So let me just tell you a personal experience. Back in 2018, 2019, I established a really good relationship with Denon. They sent me the Prime 4 ahead of anybody else. I was one of the first people to get it and I had an NDA in place that basically I, I couldn't post the video until it was released. I made a cool video, I posted it when I released. It all went great, everyone was happy. I made a follow-up video critiquing it. 
and I critiqued it a little a little heavily. Like I, I critiqued basically some of the hardware features of it, the software features, and um, that was pretty much my video. Like I was going just more in depth in it after using it for a little while. Shortly after I posted that video, um, I was actually, my, my rep at the time, he contacted me, he's like, yo, upper management's not happy about that video. Can you take it down? And I was like, no. And they're like, we're, I don't know if we're gonna, and basically since then, that was kind of, it was, a, it was a tough little thing we went through where basically they wanted the, they didn't like what I said, they didn't want that to be posted, and basically I, I haven't been able to get any Denon products ahead of time since then. Now, the whole entire management team at Denon has changed since then, but that was kind of my past experience, and I was like, that's kind of weird. I didn't like that whole ordeal where just because I said my opinion, now you won't send me any more products. And it's shifted my viewpoint on working with companies in the future to the point now where I'm very clear with any company that works with me. And basically what my process is with any company is if you want me to make a video on your product, you are going to send me the product, I'm going to have time to use the product, and I will choose to make a video or to not make a video. Because as a business owner myself, I understand the bad press side of things. So if I'm going to, if you give me a product and I really don't like it, I'm not gonna make a video on it. I'm gonna give you feedback, I'm gonna tell you why I don't like it, I'm gonna send it back to you, I don't need to make a video on it. You give me a product I love, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna show that I'm actually using it at my events, and I might make a review video down the line, but I wanna more show people that I actually use this stuff because I understand when I have a product and I show it on my channel, there are people out there, you might be one of them watching that, if I have a product and you see me using it, you're gonna want it and you're probably gonna buy it or you're gonna try and buy it. Mm -hmm. So I'm very careful of what products I show on my channel to make sure that I am actually truly 100% in love with said product. That's my process, that's how I work. I will tell you guys some of the industry things that are a little shady. Um, I've been given contracts from companies that they basically say, oh, we'll send you this speaker, we'll send you this DJ controller, but we need you to make a video on YouTube, we need you to make an Instagram post, a Facebook post, and you need to have two picture posts after that. They like specify exactly what I have to post. Some of them even state that I have to send them the video ahead of time for their approval. And they will approve to post for me for me to post it or to not post it. Or they might tell me to go back to the drawing board and change it. Now again, like I told you, we're not getting paid to make these videos. And YouTube ad revenue, unlike what some people think, is not much money. It's not. It's like $500 a month, if that. That doesn't pay the bills, not even close. It is extra money and I'm grateful for the ad revenue I get, but still, $500 a month doesn't pay the bills. Some people are making a thousand, it's still not much money. It's like $12,000 a year max. Some people might be making 20, unless you're someone like Carlos Antina that's getting uh, like hundreds of thousands of views, you're not gonna be making much money when it comes to ad revenue. So we try to supplement that in different ways. And one of them is through affiliates where if we're using a product that we like, say for me, I use HoneyBook, I use Vibo. If you guys, I express how much I love them, I use them in my company, and then I basically say, if you guys wanna sign up, if you use this affiliate link, I get a little bit of a kickback. That's awesome, you're supporting me, you're supporting the channel, and helping me push basically more of my content. Great, love it. That's how I, the approach I take on both lighting is if I'm going to send a product out to one of my guys to make a review, um, let's say Aaron Strong, Nick's actually got some products, some other people, I'm going to send them the product. I've sent them the product for free. They're not obligated to make a video at all. They're not. If they do choose to make a video, I'll give them an affiliate link if they love the product. But every one of my guys that basically wants to contact me that is an influencer for Both Lighting USA, I will send them the product. If they choose to make a video, great. If not, awesome. They can still keep the product, it's up to them. I'm just basically taking a cost on my end as the manufacturer to give them a product and hope that they make a video for me, positive or negative. That's how it works for me. That's the more fair way I think as a manufacturer, things should be obligated that I'm going to send this product to a person to make a review or potentially make a review for me and they're going to get to keep it because 
I'm not going to do this back and forth bull crap. That's like my cost and my payment to them is they get a free piece of hardware. If they don't like it, they can sell it themselves on their back end and make a little money on that that way. That's kind of my personal opinion on how the back end affiliate stuff should work. But again, in summary, I'm just trying to clarify or what I was trying to do and I did so poorly and I I I apologize so strongly for all the channels, all my boys. I, I'm sorry I attacked you guys' character. I did not mean to do so whatsoever. Very poor choice of wording. I removed the video. Sorry, Nick. Sorry, Cleveland, Mojax, all you guys, Crossfade, Phil. I'm s like, that was a bad, oh my God. I, like I said, I couldn't sleep last night when I watched Nick break down what I said and how that opinion comes across. I was, I was just dumbfounded. I was like, that is one of the stupidest mistakes I've ever made is making those comments. It's, it's up there on my YouTube career. So again, I apologize. Um, I hope I clarified a little bit more of what I was trying to convey with that is more just push for clarity and for people to make their own opinions. I really appreciate those people in our community, we need those people to be making those review videos and really showing all the nitty gritty features and details of it. Um, I just want clarity in our community and all of them are very good on specifically saying what their relationship is with each company, if they were provided the controller, whatnot. I do think we could maybe go a step further in clarifying. Um, I've just learned from personal experience. I've had some products in the past where people assume what my relationship is with the thing. They assume I'm getting paid to make a video for a Mackie speaker or something like that. And it's like, it's so far from the truth. And I have really tried diligently in the beginning of my video and the end of my videos to state the clarification of my relationship and any money obligations or whatnot that I have with a product, with a manufacturer, because I've been burnt a couple of times. Like people have, have criticized me heavily for it. And I do think we can provide better clarity just so that way when people are watching the video, they know where all of us stand. They know if we're getting the products ahead of time and we've had time to look over the product, they know if we have an affiliate kickback related to it, we know if we have a contract we're signed because I think overall if we provide that clarity, it'll also push manufacturers to not be so or not have bad practices as well and just allow for way more transparency when it comes to reviews. There's a lot of industries out there. Amazon is heavily guilty of it, of corruption when it comes to the reviews that are on their site. And I don't want that to make its way into the DJ industry. I just want all of the viewers to be aware of what it is, everyone's relationship is with every company. So that way we have clarity, we don't have, we won't ever evolve to having corrupt people in our industry or anything related to that. And again, I probably just shouldn't have even said it, but I said it, so I gotta clarify, I have to go a little more in detail as to what it is and the opinions and whatnot related to the subject. So I, I, I literally truly am sorry guys. I, again, statements have been retracted. Didn't mean to do it. This is just quick. This is a long video, but um, the overall overarching message is I apologize for the comments I made related to the other channels. I take back everything I said. And um, basically to wrap it up, the Omnius Duo is still a terrible controller in my opinion. In my opinion. Make your own opinion. Watch the videos. Watch all the videos. Judge, make your own opinion based on the combination of all the other opinions you see out there online and make your buying decisions that way. Again, all of our, basically our power when it comes to the DJ industry and getting manufacturers to make products that we want comes down to how much money we spend with them. So if you choose to spend money with Pioneer Alpha Theta, they'll keep doing what they're doing. If you choose to not, they'll make changes. They, they, they want us to buy their products. That's how they operate at the end of the day. So if we choose not to buy an Omnius Duo, they're gonna go back to the drawing board, come up with something else. So, anyways, hope you guys watch this. If you did, if you're watching at this point, um, hashtag squad. Um, yeah, keep them burgers spinning. Peace.